Every whore down in New York liked Christmas a lot. But Rorschach, who lived in a run-down apartment, did not. Rorschach hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be that his fedora wasn't screwed on quite right. It could be, perhaps, that his trench was too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his trench, he stood there on Christmas Eve admitting a stench, staring down from his window with a sour blotted frown at the cooked-out pimp with drug dealing going down. He knew every New Yorker in the city below would shout to him, Save us! And he'd whisper, No. And they're peddling their child pornography, he runked with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his glove fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to keep Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the filthy girls and boys would wake full of greed and they'd rush to their toys. And then, oh, the noise. Oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. Then the vermin, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They'd stuff all their faces like a gluttonous beast, which was something Rorschach couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he'd liked least of all. Every human cockroach in New York, the tall and the small, would stand close together, with Christmas lights beaming. Like an abattoir of retarded children, they'd all start their screaming. They'd scream, and they'd scream, and they'd scream, 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 scream. And the more Rorschach thought about this whole place, he knew that it feared him. He'd seen its true face. Why, for forty-five years I've put up with it now. I must stop Christmas from coming. But how? He got an idea. An awful idea. Rorschach got a wonderfully awful idea. I know what to do. Rorschach hermed in his throat, and he made up a quick Ozymandias headband and coat. And he shorked, and he leapt. Now this would be tight. With this band and this cape, I'll look just like Adrian Veidt. All I need is Bubastis. Rorschach looked around, but since giant mutated cats are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop old Rorschach? No, Rorschach simply said, If I can't find Bubastis, I'll use Daniel instead. So he called his friend Dan, then he took some red thread, and he tied some big ears to the top of Dan's head. Then he loaded some bags, his face in deadpan. On the deck of the owl ship, he prodded poor Dan. And then Rorschach said, Floor it! And the ship started down, toward the homes where the scum lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, the stench of fornication filled the air. New Yorkers were all committing their sins without care. When he came to the first complex on the square. This is stop number one, Rorschach hissed. And he climbed the fire escape, grapple gun in his fist. Then he kicked in the door, but the lock never fought. Ugh, should know better than to trust Gordian Knot. He hermed only once, a hand placed to his face. Then he stuck his head out to survey the place, where the excessively filled stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he spat, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk, while mumbling most unpleasant. Around the whole room, he curb-stomped every present. Action figures, skin mags, liqueur of all types, cologne, aftershave, and ball-tipped glass pipes. He stuffed them in a trash bag, then Rorschach, very discreet, stuffed them out the window to fall to the street. Then he slunk to the fridge where he decided to hide, where he ate the canned beans while he waited inside. He cleaned out the appliance right down to the tubes. Why, Rorschach even took their last sugar cubes. He stuffed all the food out the window with glee. And now said Rorschach, I'll burn down the tree. And Rorschach approached the tree, and he grabbed some cologne. When he heard a small sound, and he saw he wasn't alone, he turned around fast and saw a costumed whore, little Lori Lou Who, 
who was no more than... 34. Rorschach had been caught by this little silk specter, who, staying at her mom's house, rushed out to protect her. She stared at Rorschach and said, Ozymandias, why? Why are you burning down our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Rorschach was so smart and so slick? He thought up a lie, and he thought it up quick. Why, my dear red-headed friend, the fake Adrian stood, stopping me now would do you no good. So, complaining and fighting is useless, you know. I'd already burned down the tree thirty-five minutes ago. And his fib puzzled the woman. Then he gave her a shove, back towards her room with American love. And then Lori left with her gift from Old Roar, Coke in a green glass bottle, kind they don't make anymore. And the last thing he took was the gun that they had. No license for this. I checked. Very bad. Then he did the same thing to the other people's flats, leaving crumbs much too small for the other people's rats. It was a quarter past dawn when he gave them the slip, all the citizens still a snooze, when he packed up the ship. Packed it up with their rabies, their pipe with circular tips. Was all he could do fleck foam from his lips? Fifty feet up to the top of Gunga Diner, to burn all their filth. There could be nothing finer. Liberals and prostitutes. He was Rorschachishly humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They'll be waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then all the evil in New York will all cry, Boo-hoo! That's a noise, ronked Rorschach, that I'd like spread across the nation. So he put a hand to his ear for further investigation, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low. Then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, the sound sounded happy. This couldn't be so. The story got sappy. He stared down at the city, where Shaq widened his brown eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every politician in New York, every hooker on call, was singing, without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Despite all the pinkies he'd fractured, it came just the same. And Rorschach, with his booted feet ice cold in the snow, stood herming and anking. How could it be so? It came without debauchery, sex, and bad tastes. It came without murder, foaming up at their waists. And he hermed for three hours, until his hermer was sore. And then Rorschach thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, isn't something to deplore. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Manhattan, they say, that Rorschach's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't beat quite so fast, he brought back the junk he'd stolen from the rest of the cast. And he brought back the food, the meat and the greens, and he, he himself, Rorschach, brought the baked beans.